sciences is huge. All kinds of administrators and nurses and um, doing avatars and post-patient um, diagnostics and things. So um, yeah, there's really nothing that doesn't touch. In fact, it's a little hard to um, differentiate your model of collaboration system where you had um, such a complex uh, structure of, of marketing, focus groups, star system, you know, endless rewrites by multiple script writers. It's hard to see that process um, as what, what we more intuitively uh, think of as a collaboration and in more uh, experimental artistic projects much more open-ended collaboration right. and it's not even top down it's like at every level <coughs> you've got um, very kind of uh, often technologically implemented structures such as the software that you do visual effects in right. very techni technically specialized right. um, you've got just enough time to learn how to make uh, a volcano and then the deadlines tomorrow um, do you see what I mean? I do, and actually, that's it. no, that's a, that's a really great point, and um, someone who's bringing that point to uh, a very focused goal is uh, Jim Cameron. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with him on, on several films, but not Avatar. Um, and his whole goal is to do away with, and and actually, to to an extent, uh, Lucas did this as well by inventing the editor, which became Avid. Pixar, I'm using a computer to, to, to do visual compositing, and basically speed up that process, um, and not have it reliant on technology or this structural way of doing things, but, but rather to allow you to be creative. Um, the music analogy that came to me when you were talking about notes again was improvisation, right? So when you get individual notes together and there's improvisation going on, well then that's the kind of collaborative, you don't know what you're gonna get, right? Because if you're a musician, you know, you're something wonderful out of improvising. Um, so but what Jen is doing, uh, based on the Avatar technology, is basically getting rid of post-production, getting rid of that entire process that you just described, where it gets very mechanical, and very hierarchical, and very technology-bound um, and restricted. Um, because what we do in pre-production, which is the very fun and fluid and fast and improvisational process of filmmaking, or art making, Right now, the work that's actually the output of that is fairly low res. If everybody has seen uh, behind the scenes making of Avatar, um, you know, there's, there's big virtual sets and they're all built in the computer so they're, they're digital, but you're on a real set with real actors who are doing motion control, uh, motion capture. The motion control is on the camera itself, which is very free form and, and, and all of this is hooked up and, and running live 60 frames per second all on a monitor that I can hold like a real camera, but I'm, I'm in an empty stage, but yet I'm seeing a lush rainforest and I'm seeing blue actors, not the real actors on the stage. And it's very fluid and, and you know, I'm directing and that's fun. So Jim's goal is to take all of that, but have the, the actual output of that would be the finished film quality. So that way you, you literally do away with the whole post-production process and you don't get bogged down in the way, you just live in the moment. And then it all comes down to just like shooting live action and then you go to the editing suite. And that's it, that's what the way should be about. And you start with a great story, you shoot the footage, and you edit it. And you know, you get the music, of course. And, and then you know, 
don't have 500 people on that right. list of uh, movies? Probably not 500, but a lot of, yeah, there's still a lot of work in that pre-production, that, that whole shooting stage stuff. But uh, but you're right, a vast majority of them will, will basically kind of go away, in a sense. It's not too much worse to me. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I'd say all of the stuff, it's also the democratization of this technology, too, because if, once the stuff gets so ubiquitous, like it has with the digital camcorder and your workstation, with all, you can get all the software on your computer for free, basically open source, using Blender and, and all the stuff, basically for free, and make an artistic expression. I mean, we all do that, right? That's why we're here. This is the, the work that we're displaying. So it basically, it basically can go from just being a cog in a wheel of another giant machine to freeing up your own artistic expression. That's my positive spin. You disagree. Good point. But do you ever see the movie industry as being able to accommodate individual artistic expression down in the pipeline? Below? Well, I mean, it always has, right? Independent film. No, but I mean the actual animators who are sitting there as kind of sweatshop production well, I think it, it might, you might get more and more um, specialized. I mean, the reason we were talking <coughs> about the beauty, the unbelievable art of stop motion animated film, it's still being produced today. It doesn't have to be. It's so, you know, it's using 100 year old technology. It's so laborious and time intensive and it's so hard. But people are still doing it because that's an individual artistic expression, right, that they want to use. So, in the sense that now, maybe 20 years from now, people will, will still be doing individual animating, making films, and people look at them and say, what are you, nuts? Are you crazy? You just have to talk now and tell the computer, animate running beautiful woman across fields, poppy fields, and, you know, and it, it'll just completely materialize in a three-dimensional holographic way, and you know, we just have to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And people will say, no, you can't keyframe, can't, what are you, nuts? <laughs> I hope not. That's what it is. Yeah, that's no, true. And yeah, the, the distribution channels are also free. So whatever you want to do, just put it out there. I mean, there's again, the point of the, the middle word of that, that excellence is there's going to be a lot of mediocre stuff out there, and there is now. I mean, and there always has been. There's probably a lot of mediocre cave art, but you know, we, <laughs> stuff that we see, you know, in Altamira and, and the other places. Things change the music industry. Though, is it? That there are actually more oh, people sure. actually doing live music now because of the distribution is good. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the metaphors, yeah, the music industry is, is uh, a tremendous example mm -hmm. that we can talk about, you know, what happens to the individual artists, and, uh, but session musicians are still getting work. And well, I think they, they are more likely to be there now than they were before. Yeah, potentially. That's very nice. What I, I don't know, what I find puzzling is, I mean, as you know, you yourself you put up the key, original key. It's a great question, but it's about art, right? It's, it's, a, it's about an arc of, a, of an artistic career. Uh, I mean, when I started, it was, I couldn't have been more happy, you know, working with these, 
these filmmakers and these artists and being young and not having that worldview and working on, I was just thrilled to death to be working 12 hours a day, seven days a week to you know, help a filmmaker realize so you think if, if it's their dream, if it's their dream, oh, absolutely. then they're willing, they're happy to be oh, oh, us. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's not, they're different from me. They're happy to be. But it's, that, yes. but it's an arc. I mean, uh, some people last longer than others, but hopefully everybody has an arc and any, everything that they do. So like, what I said, you know, I, I got bored. I got tired of doing things in, a, in this cog machine way. And it wasn't personally fulfilling and, or interesting or exciting in any way. So I fell out of it, right? But only after having done it for 10 or 15 years and I looked for newer things. So I, you know, I started producing and directing and uh, eventually getting into teaching, and now full-time administration, and it's just, so right, my arc is continuing. Um, so. I just want to say there's one thought to that. Um, working on a big production uh, from an animator standpoint, who is the, the that just had the comment with that? Yep. Um, I really get jazzed after I finish working on a big production and I sit in a dark theater and it comes up on the big screen and I see my contribution. Like, it, it thrills me. And I still feel that way, even though I've been working in this industry for a long time. You do get a kind of burnout that happens after a while, where you do, you know, I know other animators who work for Pixar and places like that, and you think this is the pinnacle of where an animator wants to be at Pixar. You know, but even they get burnout working on big films, and, and I know some who left to pursue individual, um, you know, short films and things like that, because they need to get back to that expression but they're you know he's gonna go they're gonna go back to Pixar eventually too because there's still that um, that thrill that just comes from contributing with that many people and finishing with this beautiful production that you know you can see your individual piece that you put in there so maybe another real quick question and I think we'll get a wrap up for lunch yeah. otherwise we're not gonna be able to see this either anyway. can, I, can I just say I think a good counter example is um, some independent special effects films. You see now, like Gareth Edwards' Monsters. Mm -hmm. Do you know that film? No. It's a British guy who worked in the effects industry and then went off and made his own uh, low-budget effects film. It's very, um, it's very well done. You can, well, we could probably see it's cheaply made, but it's still very effective right. and it's been very successful. It's not an experimental film or anything like that. But it's, it's quite original. It's very well. Um, uh, very well done, and uh, I think is it District Nine or South yeah. Africa? Mm -hmm. Based on yeah. a short film. Yeah, a much sort of smaller production, and the scale I think is more sympathetic to the more open-ended kind of collaboration. Although I, my point isn't so much about collaboration in this instance. It's it's like finding a different production mode right. outside this <coughs> very. Um, um, bloated Hollywood system. Right. Yeah, maybe just to, to wrap up, uh, emphasize Dana's point and what I was talking about earlier, there's always going to be the difference between an individual artist and a collaborative team. I think both of those have, are, can be tremendously satisfying. And most people, myself included, find it really exciting to go back and forth. You, know, you might get the fulfillment out of one way for quite a while, but then want to go and, and dabble in the other. I think that that's helpful. I should probably stop now. So we, we yeah. go.